This video is about my Fujifilm X-H1 3 lens kit. The three lenses are the XF16-55 f2.8, the X35mm f1.4, and the Rokinon 12mm f2.4 x mount disclaimer i built this kit over 18 months by trading in some camera gear i was no longer using and covering the rest by saving up over time you do not i repeat do not need to get these exact lenses or build this exact kit to produce great work based on some of the comments that i got on my 18 months later with the xh1 there's definitely some use for some vintage lenses out there that you can definitely pick up and produce great work. But get what works best for you and your budget, or if you have gear that you're no longer using, sell it, trade it in, buy used, as long as it is in good condition, if that is something you wanna do. But with all of that out of the way, I wanna thank you for liking, subscribing if you aren't, and let's get into this video. So here's my three lens kit I've been using for the better part of the last 18 months. I've had the Fujifilm X-H1. You can check out my 18 months later video right here or down in the description, but I have a specific use for all three of these lenses. Some of the uses may crisscross, but I use this for vlogging, photography, and videography. But let's start with the lenses I use for photography. First up is the 35 millimeter F1.4. The F1.4 speaks for itself. It is a 52.5 full frame equivalent or Fuji's nifty 50. Fuji has a 33 millimeter, which is also close to 50, closer to 50, I would say than this one, but I would count them both as nifty 50s. They are great 50 millimeter ish range lenses. But today we're talking about the 35 millimeter and with a fast aperture that renders creamy background blur and spectacular subject background separation. The lens is sharp, compact, sports a full metal build, has an aperture ring, a focus ring, and comes with this rectangular lens hood that I never take off. The focus motors are pretty vocal. You can hear them when they are in action and you can see them working because the lenses actually move when you are focusing. This lens is great for portraits, flat lay, street photography, and it also so works for however you find it useful. But next up is the XF16-55 f2.8. The zoom lens that rules them all, which is arguable depending on who you ask. It is a 24-82.5 to full frame equivalent, basically Fuji's 24-70 to with a little more reach. With an aperture at f2.8, it is fast for most situations. Subject background separation is good enough. The lens is sharp, sports a full metal build, has an aperture ring, a focus ring, and a zoom ring. The lens isn't compact by any means due to the weight and size of the 16 to 55 you might want to look into the 16 to 80 millimeter or the 18 to 55 if you're looking for a lightweight kit this lens is great for events weddings portraits street photography although it isn't discreet in whatever else scenario you might find it useful now for videography i'll be talking about the same two lenses the 35 f 1.4 and the 16 55 f 2.8 <laughs> The 35 millimeter f1.4 is up first again. This lens is great because of its fast aperture. Definitely good if you are looking for that buttery cinematic look everyone wants. Everything I mentioned in the photography section applies here as well. One thing I have to mention though is the lens is loud so I would recommend using it in situations where the audio isn't that important because you're going to hear the motors at work but when it comes to shooting b-roll then this lens is the lens I grab when I'm looking for that portrait in video look. Next up is my favorite lens because of its focal length, and that is the XF 16-55 f2.8. Everything from the photography section also applies here. If you are looking for one lens to do it all, then the 16-55 f2.8 is it. It gets you wide, it gets you tight. It's wide for when you want to be close up, personal, and in action, and if you were shooting a documentary. And it's tight for if you need to step back and get in into action, but still want to be close in person. The 2.8 gives you compression, separation, and access to dimly lit situations. It isn't perfect because there are some scenarios where the 2.8 just isn't enough and you have to crank the ISO but it's better than the 3.5 or the F4 you may find on the 16 to 55. I mean the 16 to 80 or the 18 to 55. And the major upside and downside of the lens is the weight. It may help you when you need a little more weight to cut out some of the jitters. But now we're gonna talk about vlog. My 
only vlog lens as of this video is the broken on 12 millimeter f2 an 18 millimeter full frame equivalent lens that is wide and fast enough for vlogging in most situations the lens has a plastic bill but the plastic doesn't feel cheap and it has a focus ring and that's it it comes with a plastic lens hood and a plastic rear cap and i keep the lens hood on at all times unless i'm using a filter and i'm sure this lens is great for photography but i haven't used it for photography just yet so to be continued on that front but when it comes to vlogging i use this lens all the time whenever i am vlogging but one thing i would mention is to look out for lens flaring and direct sunlight the images lose contrast and you get a ton of lens flares i think it gives a character but other than that my favorite vlog lens as of right now is the broken on 12 millimeter because of the fast aperture but let me know what you think of this lens lineup you can check out this fujifilm playlist right here to learn more about my fujifilm kit thanks for liking subscribing if you're new here and staying awesome stay awesome